Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is our healer. Amen. He is our provider. Amen. He is our strength. Amen. He is our hope. Amen. We can rest in Him. We can rest under the shadow of the Almighty. We can bask in the glow of His presence. And uh, we can have what He desires for us today. And when we put Him first, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Praise His holy name. Amen. Praise His holy name today. We've sensed His presence today. We sense that He is amongst us. He's always with us. His Word says that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He knows what we have need of today. He knows what you have need of today. Amen? We just praise Him that it is not through might nor by power, but by His Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord is moving The Spirit of the Lord is ministering. The Spirit of the Lord is saving. And the Spirit of the Lord is opening doors that no man can shut. The Spirit of the Lord is hovering. And the Spirit of God is here today. And guess what? He's The Lord has given us authority to speak by our words and by our mouth and to believe and to trust in God and to speak to the things as though they're not, but they should be. Amen? We can declare with Him that the heavens rejoice and that the heavens declare the glory of God. We can speak with Him and say that that we are His children, and we are more than conquerors through Christ that first conquered. Oh, we serve an awesome God. The heavens roar, and the, the skies proclaim His glory today. And we worship Him because of what He has done in our lives, what He has accomplished, and what He's going to do. Amen. Oh, we serve a mighty God. If you'll be turning in your Bibles to Judges chapter 5, we're going to be looking at a passage that declares the glory of God. And the title of my message today is, When God Declares War. When God Declares War. We see here in these scriptures, it's actually a profound verse where God declares war upon the enemies, <coughs> enemies of Israel. Matter of fact, there was an enemy of Israel that the king of Syria, and he had this fierce army of over 900 iron chariots. Think back in that day, there were chariots of iron, and God says that he's declaring war against the enemies of his people. Verse 2 says, When leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Here it says that when the people willingly offer themselves, nobody had to beg them and nobody had to plead with them. They were willing to offer themselves to join the battle and to march into the field. And the battle was the fight of the Lord. Amen. And the battle is the Lord's. But here we see in verse 2 that the people willingly offered themselves. You see, when God declares war, when God begins to do war and warfare... We need to join Him, and we need to get in the action, and we need to be where God is going. Amen? Verse 4 says that like this, it says, Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled, the heavens poured, and the cloud also poured water. Here we see that even the earth began to tremble. Even the, when God declared war, even the earth decided to get in on the battle. Even the clouds decided to get in on the battle because they wanted to join forces with God and to go where He was going. There was nobody idly sitting by, but they were ready to battle with Him. Can you imagine trying to fight in a battle and the ground began to shake? 
Can you imagine the battle and the, the rains begin to pour? Can you imagine the battle when even the fog became so dense you couldn't see the person next to you? But that's when all of heaven and all of earth decided to join battle when God declared war. See, God doesn't play fair when He decides to declare war. When His enemies are, are soon shaken and destroyed, we can see that God was not playing fair, but He spoke to the heavens. He spoke to the earth. He spoke to the clouds. And they began to fight and join alongside Him. The rain began to pour. Matter of fact, you can see the chariot wheels as the rain was pouring. They were those 900 iron chariots. And the rain began to pour and those wheels could no longer, they were losing traction. They were hitting potholes and they were being stopped all of a sudden because when God declares war, when God decides to declare war, there's nothing that can defeat Him or no ability of the enemy. You see, God declares war. And he declares to his children, join with me and you will see the victory of God in your need and in your life. You see, God doesn't play fair. He'll let the symphonies of heaven begin to play. The symphony of, of the clouds and of the rain and of the fog and of the stars and of the rivers and the rocks. And he, and he calls us today, the Bible says, to join him. Even in praise, sometimes we just have to praise Him. His Word says if we don't praise Him, the rocks will cry out. The rocks will proclaim the glory of God. But He wants us to do our part today, to participate in what He is calling us to do. Verse 1, it says, Then Deborah and Barak, the son of Onium, sang on that day. Verse 1, <laughs> here a Deborah, she, there wasn't... She was a woman, and there wasn't much she could do in going to warfare, but she did her part. She began to sing. She began to sing and proclaim the glory of God and proclaim His righteousness and His presence. She began to sing. You see, God can use everything, that the talents that He's given us and the strengths and the gifts no matter what they are, God has produced a body, the body of Christ. We all have a gift. We all have a purpose. We all have a part in what God calls the body of Christ to join with Him in declaring war against the enemy, declaring that God is greater and not getting discouraged, not getting off focus or distraught in what God has called us to do. Amen. We need to join with Him because when He begins to, to slay the enemy, when he begins to turn the stars and turn his glory upon them, you will see them fall out. You will see your enemy. You will see your stronghold that no longer can resist the power of God and the presence of God to defeat your enemy. But we need to join with him today. We can see the stars. The, the Bible, the Scriptures say that even the stars got on, in on the act. Now how could the stars get in on the act? They were fixed in the sky. Well, it says that the stars began to... You see, back then, the only way that they had sense of direction was by looking to the stars. So it says in the Scriptures, the stars hid themselves. So that the enemy then was directionless and clueless and didn't know where to go or what to do. And that's what God is declaring today in our battles. That he's telling the enemy or showing the enemy when the enemy tries to get some direction. He loses direction because the stars began to hide themselves. And the enemy becomes confused and destroys himself. Amen. That is what our God does for His children. He calls and He says, Be ready for the battle. Be prepared. Get into the battle and get into the fight and He will declare war and you will see victory in your life. You see, heaven today is declaring war on demonism. It's declaring war on carnality. It's declaring war on guilt and condemnation. 
Heaven's declaring war on addiction and alcoholism and everything today that's trying to snuff out this Jeremiah generation. You see, heaven is beginning to declare war. Oh, hallelujah, the greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And when we have the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that every place that our foot trods, that shall become the inheritance of the saints. We need to start taking back the territory that the enemy has stolen in our lives. We need to declare that my God has begun to do battle. And today I'm joining that battle. I'm getting involved. I'm ready to stand where God has called me to stand. I'm ready to see the glory of God poured out. No longer are we going to see our children snuffed out by the sins of this world. No longer are we going to see our families destroyed. No longer are we going to see the enemy be able to pluck out the sheep out of the fold. But we're declaring that we're going to war with our almighty God. We're declaring that we are ready to put on all all the armor of God doing all that we can to battle against the enemy because heaven is beginning to declare war against all the sin and the sickness and the poverty and the, and the destituteness of people. God is declaring for His children and His church to be ready for the time is coming and the time is even now when we begin to declare by our voice, by our action, by our faith, by our doing things that God has called us to do. The Bible says faith without works is dead. The, our Almighty God is calling us to rise up with action. Rise up and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if God's called you to do something. Don't be afraid of what He's called you to do. If He's called you to take a rock and put it in a sling and begin to whirl it at the enemy, let go of the rock and see where it lands because my God knows. My God will help that rock travel to that place to see the enemy destroyed in our lives and in our hearts. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. He's declaring to, uh, to us to rise up. Uh, rise up, O oh church. Rise up and see the glory. See the glory of our Heavenly Father. Rise up, my children, and see me as I declare war. As you step into the battlefield, declares the Lord, I will direct the weapons of your warfare. I will show you my power and my might. But walk in the way and walk in the path that I have called you to walk. Stand on the wall. Stand in your place and see Him deliver and set free the captive. Amen? We need to get enlisted and involved. I think sometimes we get kind of, we get discouraged, we get waylaid, or, you know, something happens. But, but today, God is calling us to get enlisted and to get involved. We got to shake off. Uh, shake off this old man. We got to shake off this flesh, and we got to shake off what we see with our eyes and begin to see God move in a powerful and a mighty way and not get discouraged by what we see, but get encouraged by what we know. <laughs> Amen? We know that we serve a God that is greater, that nothing is impossible with Him. We can't let our experiences in life negate the Word of God. Amen? We can't let that which we might have experienced in the past stop the Word of God from having an effect now in our lives. But we got to grab a hold of the Word of God and take the Word of God. Sometimes the Word of God is an offensive weapon and it's the sword of the Spirit of God and we have to wield that sword against the enemy. See, God won't let, won't, we won't take nothing back if we just sit back. 
We'll take nothing back. The Bible says that the, heaven, the, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent taketh it by force. We have to take back that which the enemy has stolen. We have to stand in the place that God has called us, and we have to be ready to fight the battle with the Lord. Amen? Sometimes we get wounded, but guess what? The Bible shares with us and tells us that He is our healer. He's Jehovah Jireh, our healer. So if we get wounded in battle, we can just be taken off the battlefield for a little bit and then set under the anointing of, of medic Jesus. And Jesus will repair us and renew us if it's our heart, if it's our mind, or whatever it might be. You see, God is our healer. And He is declaring today to His children to don't be concerned of the battle, but be concerned of what God is calling you to do. Don't be afraid of the battle. Don't be afraid of what is before you, but rest on, in the arms of mighty Jesus, our King and our warrior. Amen. He's our King. And we are subject to Him. And He will watch over us. He will protect us. But let's look at something interesting here. It says in verse 23, suddenly the Bible says an angel. An angel notices something that, about this tribe of people, and it was a curse on Moraz. Said the angel, he said, curse Moraz. Said the angel of the Lord, curse its inhabitants bitterly, because they do not come to the help of the Lord. To the help of the Lord against the mighty. See, here is a tribe of people, the Moraz, that just sat back idly and watched the Lord battle and fight, but they wouldn't join in on the battle. And the angel of the Lord said, curse them. Why would God bitterly curse a people? Were they committing some horrible sin? Were they doing something awful? Were they doing something that God didn't like? The Bible says, they were cursed because God had declared war and they didn't join in the battle. They didn't get involved. They sat back and they watched God do battle, but they didn't get involved. You see, today the Bible tells us Jesus in Matthew 12, He puts it like this. If you're not with me, you're against me. He that does not gather will scatter with me scatters abroad. In other words, Jesus is saying that neutrality in a time like this is not permitted. If heaven declares war on sin and on shame and on guilt and the powers of Satan that's destroying the lives of people, there's no place of neutrality. There's no time to sit back and watch. There's no time like the time that we're living to sit back and let the lives of people be destroyed. It's time to get involved. It's time to use our gifts and our talents. There should be nobody that's sitting idly by and not allowing God to use the talent that, that He has given them. God is calling His people to get ready. God is speaking to them. There's no time like today. We, we need to get involved. The world like never before is, is taking people out of the church and they're doing nothing. Nothing. They're not involved. They're distracted. They're deluded. They're weak. They're lukewarm. They're no longer on fire for God. They've let lukewarmness take them over. And they're no longer fighting the battle of God. But they're living in the world. They're living in carnality and they're not full of the Spirit of God. The day that we live today, we know the statistics. We know what's happening. You can see what's happening. But the Lord is declaring war. And there needs to be 100% participation in order for the church to be effective. 
in order for the church to reach the lost, in order for the church to be on fire for God. You see, God did not just call the pastor to win the lost. God did just not call the pastor to clean the church. God did not call just the pastor to teach. God did not just call the pastor to play music. God did not just call the pastor to be the usher. God did not just call the pastor to do everything around the church. But God has raised up a body, a body of believers. But you see, some today are hiding the talent that God has given them. They're hiding it by sitting on it in the church so that others can't see it. We got to get out, we got to get involved. See, this church can't be strong unless everybody's doing their part. We're a body. The Bible says the church is a body. And every member has a part and every member does a function. Every member of the body, I can't walk unless I got legs and I got feet and toes. I can't raise my, my arm unless I got muscles that are all doing. I can't talk unless my voice box begins to talk. I can't breathe unless my lungs say breathe. You see, there's a part in the body that you have, but in order for that body to be strong, in order for that body to be effective, in order for that body to go forth in the power of God, it has to be working in symphony. It has to be working under the unction and the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. But you see what's happening today. We've become cold. and We've become lukewarm. And we're not on fire for God. We've allowed our minds and our thoughts to be deluded by this world. By the things of this world. No, we're no longer functioning at 100% of the heat and the power of God in our lives. Is that the truth? Amen. We're all facing it. We're all, we're all, you see the Bible says, stir up the gift that is in within you. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. Sometimes we have to stir up the gift that God has placed within us. And, and we have to say, God, help me. Help me get on fire. Help me get ignited. Help me get into your word. Help me to do my part that you've called me to do. See, there's no retirement in this battle. There's no retirement. There's no place that we ever reach in our life where we finally can say, I'm safe when we're still living here on earth and in this flesh and in this body. There's no place that we'll ever get where it's like nirvana on earth. It's not going to happen. You see, our enemy, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And there's no place that we'll ever get where we can't get away from that lion that's trying to destroy us. But there is no retirement in this life. Let's look at this story about the servant. Matthew 25. I don't have it up on the screen, but I'll read it. It says, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord... I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered, scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have. What is yours? I'll give it back to you. I didn't multiply it. I didn't do nothing with it, but I didn't lose it. So I'm going to give it back to you. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. See, God gives us talents and He gives us gifts so that we might multiply those gifts. We might take that talent and that gift that He's given us and we might invest it in the kingdom of God here on earth so that there might be growth, that there might be an establishment. And He says that I would collect it with interest. The Bible says, take the talent from Him and give it to the man who had ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that he will be take, it will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. 
There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, God's kingdom works. The, God's plan of economy is to give and it shall be given. God's plan of economy is to plant and it shall grow. God's plan of economy is to take the talent and the gift that God has given each and every one of us and to invest it in others, invest it in the church. You see, there's no other place that you can invest your gifts but in the church of God. Not the, not the denomination, but in the church. Amen? In your local church, in your local body. That's the way that God designed it. We have to invest that gift that God has given us. You see, the Bible said because he did nothing with what he had been given, had been given he became a wicked and unprofitable, slothful servant. There's something that we can do today with our gift, right? With our talent. Matter of fact, there's a high unemployment rate in the church today. Over every church, there's an invisible sign that says apply within. Jobs open, jobs available, all kinds of jobs available. We need to have a job fair. Amen? We need to have a job fair with tables set up where people come up and sign up for what they want to do in the church. But see, a lot of that is being sapped by the world and taken out. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Amen? It doesn't say there's a lot of sitters, but it says there's a, lot of, a few laborers. There's a lot of sitters, but not a lot of laborers. Amen? We need preachers today. We need preachers to rise up. We need worship leaders. We need teachers. We need prayer warriors and musicians. And we need volunteers. People to run cameras and to minister to our children and to do the works of the ministry that happens every day. You see, when people offer themselves willingly, when God is going to war and on their, he's on, we're on His side, you might be saying, well, I don't have a job right now. Well, I got a job for you. <laughs> Amen? You could be coming to church praying three to four hours a day. If we do that, sometimes instead of sitting around waiting for somebody to call us, we'd be amazed at how, what opportunities and doors open. Amen? I'm talking if you don't have a job today, there's a, a job opening. There's an unemployment problem in the church. But let God have your gift free of charge, right? A lot of people are waiting, to be honest, they're waiting to be, to be paid to do the job. Let's look at the old days. If you can paint, then paint. If you can run the vacuum sweeper, we don't even have a cleaner today. We need teachers. We need ushers. We need people to work. In the old days, they used to assign jobs to families. The fa hey, this week, we don't even have people to mow the lawn. The job, your job today, this week, for a family is to take care of the lawn. Manicure. You see, we need to take care of the house of God. It's not the minister's responsibility. Amen? We need to let God have our gifts. Can I get an amen in this in this Presbyterian church today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I wrote this one down. We need some people to go to work and get rich and start tithing. Tithing on that. Amen? We can, the church can't do what it needs to do if there's, the money's not coming in. Amen? And God does... Guess what? One, a gift is a gift is become a giver. That's a gift. I don't know about you. Does your house run on fumes or nothing? No. It takes money. Amen. But God raises up the giver. If God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. <clears throat> Matthew 20 and 6 says that as they were standing around that day idle. The next verse says, why? Because, again, because no one had hired them, right? We need to get busy for the Lord. What does serving our church do? It helps us discover and develop our spiritual gifts. It allows us to experience the joy and the peace that comes through from obedience. Serving helps us to be more like Jesus. 
serving surrounds us with other Christians and help us follow with Jesus. And, and at serving at our local church help us, helps us to experience God's presence in new ways. If you've never used the gift that God has called you to, and it's, it's not until you step out in faith and use that gift that you'll start, that God will begin to invest in it. See, the Bible says to be faithful over a little, and when you're faithful over a little, He'll give you more. Being faithful over a little, then He'll give us more. Amen? Today, in this church, I hope you share this sentiment, but we don't care if, you know, someone drives up on a moped or in a Mercedes, we're going to accept them, amen? You see, when we begin to accept the people that others don't want, God will send us people that everyone wants. We need to be full of the presence and the power of God, and God can use you. Now, young person, let's all be young today. Everybody raise their hand, amen? Well, God wants to use you. Now, youth is not a license to, you know, to where you can say that there's nothing you can do. Amen? Paul told Timothy that let no one despise your youth. If you've got a gift, God can use it. If you've got a calling, God can use it. But I think, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that some of us are waiting for tomorrow to get involved, Right? Amen? God's saying that He's called you. And I don't know if you, maybe you got the gift of preaching. I know some of us have the gift of gab, but I'm talking about the gift of preaching. Amen? God may have called you to the ministry. He may have called you to, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. But whatever it is, we all have a talent. We all have a gift. We all have a calling. And He's speaking to us. Now, I'm going to say that this might be controversial also. If you got saved and you're not doing nothing, because when you get saved, you want to do something for Jesus, right? You want to do something. You want to get involved. Now, and, and another thing is, is, I remember growing up in a local church, if there wasn't... If there, I'd just pray, and God would give me a ministry. And I'd go and talk to the, to the pastor, and, and he'd, he'd be like, yeah, I was praying about that too. Yeah, I want you to do that. So there has to be some you know, prayer. There has to be some ambition. There has to be some go after it and go get them. Amen? Not just waiting for something to happen, but using the talent that God has we all, we all have a talent. We all have something that God has given us to use for His glory. Let's stand this morning. The Bible says this is a reasonable thing, to present your body a living sacrifice every day. God is saying, I have called you, and I want you to be, be used of God, to be used of Him. And it's our reasonable sacrifice. We need to get rid of this salvation that doesn't cost us anything where we're not involved where we're not doing something for him see the bible tells us that in the last days that men shall be lovers of themselves i heard a kind of a cool saying it says men are lover, lovers of selfie more than lovers of god Lovers more of themselves. They want to spend more time doing what they want to do. They want to spend more of their money doing what they want to do versus, versus doing what God has called them to do and to be involved in the local church. See, it's a spirit that we have to fight against. It's a mindset that we have to fight against today. It's so easy to leave this, these church doors this week and to kind of unplug from the church and Really, to be honest, plug into the world. We plug into video games. We plug into TV. We plug into a vacation. We plug into this and to that. And we unplug from God. 
We unplug from what he has called us to do. This is what I'm going to do today. We're going to get real. I got, I got, a, I got a sign-up sheet here. It says, what, I want to do my part. I want to join the battle of the Lord. I want to get involved with what God is calling me to do. So I got here, you put down your name, e email, phone, credit card number. No. And your gift and your commitment. What would you, what do you feel God is calling you to do? Maybe it's pray. We, hey, I'll take prayer every single day over other things. Amen. We're going to start off. I want you to, if you have a gift, even if you're doing something, I want you to come down and put down what you want to do.